Hi, my name is Raquel. In order to buy or sell, you have to have the money of the beast on your mind or in your hand. It's one of those words they don't translate correctly. It's in this apocalypse. We're listening to Fade. They used to be like my favorite local band here. And they played recently over at The Rock. They had, but I didn't really hear anything new. They played one song off their last CD, which I didn't really ever listen to. But I like their classic stuff. And uh, this is called Backwards. It's kind of one of their trippy ones. So there it is, the karagma that isn't translated correctly. It really means money that no one buys or sells. And you can see the Liddell Scott Greek English lexicon shows you that the karagma means the impress on the coin or stamp money coin, hence stamp money coin. And so the look the context, you know, no one buys or sells without the money of the beast on their mind or in their hand. So anyway, we've had a pretty crazy month since I've seen everybody here and it like the whole Babylon just seems to be cracking at the seams, especially over in Europe. Like if you've seen some of these riots in Greece where they're throwing Molotov cocktails at the police, you can get a general picture of how bad it is by looking at the gross domestic product in some of these countries here. There it is, the sick men of Europe and Italy has um, their gross domestic product has gone down and their unemployment's about 10%. Spain has like 25% unemployment. And then we got Portugal and Ireland and then there's Greece, their domestic product has really declined and their unemployment is like 20%. So a lot of them are thinking about going back to their own currency and uh, this big currency thing is just what I'm all about is this money, it's funny money and there's been a lot of famous people that have said that all wars are caused for the sake of getting money. I put that on my Gospel of Eliminating Money. There's two different versions of this. Let's see, I could probably find it faster on this one here. This is like the first edition. And uh, you got these um, quotations here. Let's see if I can find it. Uh, all wars are caused for the sake of getting money. Hmm. Oh yeah, there it is. Money is the sinew sinews of war. And then they have other people that uh, basically say the same thing. I didn't really have room for it on there, so I only uh, put that one quotation. And uh, money is the scene of wars. And of course, that guy Eisenhower warned of the military-industrial complex. Of course, he was the general in World War II. He could probably see. I mean, what was World War II for? What did? What were we fighting for? And there's a good song. Uh, I hope this music isn't too loud. That the uh, wars are all fought for money, and uh, well, you know, like Cheney had that Halliburton company that that serviced the war machine, and uh, and then the Vietnam War got some of these big companies rich, and uh, of course the war got us out of the Great Depression, and it like ruined Germany. They bombed the city so bad they had to rebuild and. Uh, they spared a church in Cologne. They spared this really wonderful old cathedral, but everything else was just flattened. And like, what was the war really about? Why did they, <clears throat> it was like the British that guaranteed that if anybody, if Germany invaded Poland, then, then Britain would go to war. And France agreed, and so they uh, started that dumb war. And look, look what it did, it like, took uh, half of Europe behind the Iron Curtains. It's like, you know, well, and then even Germany. Germany was like cut in half. And, and what was this war for? Who benefited? Stalin benefited and the Jews in Israel benefited. Hitler's original plan was to send the 
Jews to Madagascar. And uh, this is a book by uh, Pat Buchanan. I haven't started reading it. I've read some chapters in it. It just describes why the war was unnecessary and look at the outcome of it. It's like, you know, Europe is really becoming a, you know, they've got too many immigrants there from all these different foreign countries. And I was reading through some of these pictures in here and in like Churchill's last days, he was really against all the immigrants coming in there. So obviously like if Hitler would have won the war, they, they would never have had this European Union that allows all these immigrants to come in and and um, so that the country is really unstable. It's one of Spain's biggest problems was they allowed all these immigrants from like Colombia and other other South American countries to go there and now they're like stuck there and they've got 25 percent unemployment in Spain. So you probably also heard about those 49 bodies they found just on um, the other side of the Mexican border here. That wasn't here, it was in Texas. Uh, these drug gangs, there was an article in the New York Times. This is on the, started on the front page, and then it continued over to the third page. But uh, you can see all these things I've underlined here. They blamed it on the Zetas, which is like an organized crime gang. But other people are saying that they're trying to make it look like the Zetas so that people will be against them. And, but I don't know. The Zetas allegedly dumped 35 bodies on a highway near Veracruz. And then there, two months later, 26 gagged bodies found somewhere. 14 were decapitated. Nine were hanging from a bridge. But um, the victims, including six women, might have been innocent migrants like the 72 Central Americans the Zetas are believed to have killed and dumped in a grave discovered in 2010. Now, why would they be killing all these immigrants? And then they found 193 bodies last year <clears throat> that were immigrants. They really don't treat their immigrants very good down there. I'll tell you, I've seen a movie about this young man from Guatemala, and I think he was a little bit... Uh, um, mentally ill or something and he hopped a freight train trying to get in the United States and the Mexican government caught him and sent him back and uh, so he was like in this border town <clears throat> he couldn't go home his parents didn't want him and he was in a border town near Guatemala and uh, people in the town got tired of seeing him around so somebody killed him and I, I think they found his body somewhere but um, they made a movie about him. It was a documentary. So, the, I don't know, this world uh, just seems to be cracking. And I just, uh, the solution would be to eliminate money because uh, it's an unnecessary evil. It's like, you know, they're just ripping us off. Adolf Hitler was against charging interest on loans. It was one of the 25 points in his party program was to eliminate um, the uh, interest on loans. Oh, darn, I didn't bring any water with me. I think I'm going to... Oh, I, I just... Oh. <coughs> there. Maybe that'll work. So, let's see. What are we talking about here? About uh, the sickness in this society. It's like... Um, um, money is the problem. We've got the bankers and the bookkeepers and the accountants and the sales clerks and the people on Wall Street and the ones who made these mortgages and uh, forced everybody to pay all this interest. I mean, the, I heard that Iceland has a really strict policy to um, aid these people with their mortgages and write them down. But uh, here in the United States... Uh, they had a front page story in the New York Times about uh, the, some of these states are using this housing money for to plug their budget deficits. And uh, a lot of this is in California. I think they name the states that are doing it. I'm not sure if Arizona is one of them. But uh, yeah, this housing thing is like 
it's ridiculous and a lot of innocent people like me got screwed out in it and and uh, you know there's some good places to go in the world I, I got this book here one of my friends told me about it it's about Hitler getting away and there's been a lot of books I've read about this and there's a lot of evidence that Hitler did get away and he went down to a place in Argentina and I, don't, I don't have this bookmarked I can't really show you but that would be a, a great place to go to get away and um, he just kind of lived out his life there and um, the Perones um, were protecting him and then once they uh, had a, the coup down there and got rid of Eva Peron and and that other one there. And they uh, Hitler had to make some other kind of negotiation. I don't know, paid him off or something. So let's see what else we got here. Oh, I got a picture. This picture fell off my uh, wall, and so I just thought I'd show it to you. This girl was like at the Rainbow Gathering here in Arizona, and. Uh, they had a whole lot of LSD, and that was like the LSD day. And so she was like tripping out. I seen another person having kind of a bad trip, and uh, that's that's what they used to do in the hippie days. It wasn't quite like that. So that, you know, I mean, that wasn't too good. I guess there was. You know, it's like I tell you. They have um, a lot of people talk about this matrix and and the red pill and the blue pill. I think that if a lot of people would like, I don't know what it would take to wake them up. Maybe if they took some LSD, if there was just like a tiny bit of LSD in their coffee when they went to work, then you know they might um, start scratching their heads and saying, you know, why am I here at work doing this stupid, meaningless, bogus work, pushing papers around? For you know, for what you know, what, what are you producing? You're not making any nice cathedral or painting or or making a garden or anything like that. You're just pushing these papers around. You know, modern machinery was supposed to make it easy for us to get things done, but uh, they don't allow that. You know, it's like things should be easier now instead of harder. It doesn't take that many people to grow and harvest all our food, and uh, if people didn't eat meat, we wouldn't have to grow all that corn in Nebraska that they use to feed the pigs. And people can eat that corn, it's what they make tortillas out of. So, you know, it's like they don't care about people in, in Africa. It's like, why did they go in Afghanistan? It's like, you know. There's other backwards countries that we can rescue and save. Why did we choose that? You know, it's like pipelines and opium. You know, they need a place to grow this opium. And it's really causing a lot of problems over there. And, uh, you know, they've got a lot of addicts and it's getting into the Soviet Union. It's like a poison, this opium. It's, um, you know, destroying people's lives. I've seen this picture on one of my Flickr friends on the photograph site I frequent a lot. The uh, guy goes around New York City and he, he takes pictures of people in the Bronx. And uh, there was a woman on there. She was 40 years old. She's had like four kids. And the CPS takes them away because she's like a prostitute and a heroin and a crack addict. And um, that's all she's been doing. They took her kids away and. Uh, so, like, you know, these drugs, like, they stupefy, and they, you know, it's like if these people weren't high on drugs, they'd probably be angry, you know, about their situation. But they take these drugs to escape the reality. And LSD, is, it's not an escape from reality. It's, it's like a wake-up call, you know, and a lot of famous people have taken acid before, and, uh, like, Bill Gates and... and um, Mm -hmm. Well, like, we're a lot, like Cary Grant, I think he took it, and and the publishers of Life magazine, Lucy Booth, um, they took it. There was quite a lot, you know, the history of the, you know, it was just like a medicine, a psychiatric uh, medicine to um, expand your mind or just 
you know, observe things. It makes everything like like a miracle. You know, like if you're out in nature and you take some acid and, uh, you know, you see birds flying around and bees flying around and you just look at everything, it's like totally awesome. And, you know, you'd appreciate the earth instead of destroying it. You know, we're destroying it with fracking and we're polluting with burning all this fossil fuel. And it, it might cause, it's, it is, it's, you know, it's like if, this, if these oceans rise, it's going to displace millions and millions of people and uh, there's going to be all kinds of mass starvation and, and uh, it, it might disrupt the rain, you know, people, it might be a dust bowl in the Midwest and we're like running out of water there too. A lot of those aquifers in Oklahoma and some of those other places in Nebraska, they're getting low. So, you know, it's just like a perfect storm of all these problems. Like, uh, we've got the global warming, and we've got this funny money stuff, and um, what else? We've got the world population that's exponentially growing that, you know, it just can't go on like this. It's just going to get worse and worse. Here's the United States population, and with all these immigrants, it's going to end up like this. We're going to have like a billion people here in 2090. You know, I certainly won't be around then. But um, you can see the way uh, the world population has changed over here. You know, like in my dad's, when my dad was born, well, he was born before that, but there was just two billion people. And now they're estimating that there's going to be nine billion in 2032. <clears throat> so, this red line here shows what it would be like if there were no immigrants allowed to come into the United States. And so, <clears throat> you know, we've got all these, these uh, people coming up here. I mean, Mexico, I showed you earlier how there's like, it's like a civil war down there. They had, I didn't show you this graph, they have... Uh, 16,000 people were killed last year in these organized crime uh, things there, organized crime murders, and uh, it's gone up so much. It's like a war zone down there. You've got all these crazy people down there. They, they dismember bodies. There was like a video up on the internet, and uh, they showed like this guy with a chainsaw getting his neck cut off, you know, he was alive too. And his partner is sitting right next to him. And right after they cut the guy's head off with the chainsaw, they cut his head off with a knife. And they said that you could hear like him breathing through, you know, the hole in there. And um, so then I've seen some other ones too. Well, I didn't see that one, I just read about it. I, I didn't want to see it, because if you've seen one, you don't want to see another. They're, the one I saw was even worse, and um, they had these guys with face masks on, and there were like eight of them standing around with face masks and machine guns, you know, like M1s or something, or I don't know if they were um, uh, <clears throat> those Russian guns, those AK-47s, but anyway, they, <clears throat> they had one guy who was like the butcher, and he had a great big machete, and they castrated this guy and you can see him hanging upside down wriggling and as soon as they cut that off he just like froze and then they started cutting his arms off or cutting his neck off well anyway so that's what they do down there and it's kind of their culture you know it's like you know the Aztecs would rip people's hearts out and um, so I guess you know I mean how many hundreds of years was that ago? Like 1400s, mid 1400s, so 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So it was about like 600 years ago that they did that. And of course they learned that in school. They probably learned that in their ethnic studies classes. I, I have never really looked at the ethnic studies book and I wonder if they teach any history about Mexico in there. But one, thing, one cool thing about Mexico, though, is like they have these uh, psilocybin mushrooms down there, and uh, a lot of the native people ha have used those, even the young kids, you know, they kind of, you got to kind of, you know, have an older person 
teach you, you know, the right situation to, to do these things. It's kind of like a sacrament, you know, you just don't drop acid or mushrooms and walk down the street, you know, like, like everything's fine, you know, you might have a bad trip if you're not with very good friends or in a very good environment, like um, I took some acid once in Chicago and uh, you know, all the noise on the street, the buses and everything like that, it was just like freaking me out and I had to get out of there because you know, that's like the heart of Babylon and we were in some kind of uh, junk food store. My friends wanted to get something to eat, but so that was kind of a bad trip, and those guys weren't very good. I tell you, the best trips I have are either like at a festival somewhere, listening to some good music, or like out in the mountains. And uh, I used to go on these really long hikes, like 26 miles, and I'd get there real early in the morning, and I'd take some acid. In fact, I'd take the acid as I was leaving my house, so by the time I got to the trailhead, I'm starting to come up, you know, and I'd start running up the mountain and I wouldn't stop till I got to the top and uh, had some good times. So I was really healthy back then but started smoking these cigarettes and but it all started I think when I got this DUI that was probably the worst thing but then again it, I don't know it was like it couldn't go on like that you know. But uh, in fact I think it was going to be like the last time I went out too and I ended up getting bored and leaving early because usually I'd, you know, drink drink it and then I'd quit drinking at midnight and I'd, you know, leave around two. So that brings the alcohol down. But I left early and <sighs> cop saw me like at U um, University and uh, Fourth Avenue. And uh, what the heck was I doing wrong that he stopped me for? Oh, he said I didn't come to a complete stop at the four-way stop sign. And uh, so anyway, I got this DUI, and <clears throat> after that, I pretty much quit drinking a lot, or going out and drinking. Oh man, I tell you, that, that was a big bummer. You know, the, some of the people in the class that I had to go to, one of them was like working at the mine and making good money. I don't know how many dollars an hour. <clears throat> one of my friends told me today that he's going to make $23 an hour driving a truck for the city, a dump truck, so I, I was pretty happy for him, plus, you know, he gets all his benefits, but uh, some of these people, uh, you know, they, they're initiated into, like, the mushroom, and they, they respect it, and then they, you know, can, like, the Native Americans would use this peyote mushroom, or not mushroom, peyote cactus. Uh, which is masculine, and that's uh, kind of a psychedelic thing. But this LSD is a refined fungus. It's like micrograms of this stuff will get you high. It'll melt in your mind, really. But you know, like I said, you got to be in a good environment with good friends, and um, you know you should have somebody with you that's been that's experienced and. Uh, you know, uh, and don't take a very big dose at first, and that's another thing. It's like um, a lot of times I would just take like a half of one, and uh, that would be enough. And uh, but uh, anyway, then um, I would say that um, this heroin that they're in Afghanistan—that's the whole reason. That's one of the reasons we went in there. And then we have the what do they call it? The uh, oh. Gosh, uh, the oil pipelines and uh, things like that there. So anyway, I don't have that much more time. My name is Raquel. In order to buy or sell, you have to have the money of the beast on your mind or in your hand. And they don't tell you that. There's another word, mammon. Jesus said you can't serve God or mammon. So either love the one or hate the other or hold to the one or despise the other. But the Pharisees who loved money, heard all this and scoffed. And Jesus was a radical, a revolutionary. He upset the tables of money changers. Bye. God bless you. Peace and love.